Hello, it's a Monday morning. It's sunny outside. It's really cold, but the wind stopped. All right, uh, going on. Uh, uh, two things I can take up today. One is called an objective compliment. Now, I've lost track of what, what, how many sentence parts this is that I've shown you. It's maybe the tenth sentence part. I'm not sure. And incidentally, this is the 89th day, the first video. I expect that there'll be two today. <clears throat> well, an objective compliment. It completes uh, the, the it completes the direct object. Yes, that's right. There is that. There is that. E. <clears throat> that's what it does. It completes the direct object. And in a way, uh, it, I don't want to say that it's uncommon. I, I think it's common. <clears throat> but perhaps the way to approach it is when all else fails. Consider: Is this an objective compliment? Well. In a sentence like, that made me happy, that made me happy. Well, it would seem like here's the direct object, that made me. I made a cake. Well, yeah, uh, my, my money made me, made me. But that's not what's going on here. Uh, that made me happy. This is different. Uh, and a way to explain it is if you would put in the idea of to be. That made me to be happy. Uh, it isn't the same as that made me. And it certainly isn't that made happy. That made me happy. Think of it, uh, or, or here's another example. That caused me to laugh. That made me laugh. That caused me to laugh. Uh, Objective complements only occur with a select number of verbs. They're a little bit like indirect objects that way. And it seems to me that they usually have something to do with causing. The example that comes to my mind the quickest is the sun, uh, the sun made the tomatoes red. The sun caused the tomatoes to be red. That would be one. Anyway, here's the way you diagram them. That made me. Happy. Uh, uh, th this line slopes toward the uh, direct object and it completes it. That made me to be happy. Uh, if, if, or you could, you, if it were to be happy, that, that caused me to be happy. Well, in a case like that, you would, you would, this is getting ahead a little bit, but you would do this, uh, to be, to be happy. And there we have an infinitive phrase, which is the very next thing I'm going to come to. And I guess that's the first time that you've seen a stand. When you've got something that's bigger than one word, and it's not going to fit in the slot, you, you make a stand, or, or sometimes that's called a standard. Uh, and uh, that's where all this all goes. Uh, well, the 2B is, is understood here. I, I guess you probably could do something like this. But you don't. You just put happy down there. That made me happy. All right, there is an objective compliment. Another one would be, I was elected president. I was elected to be president. I was made president. Uh, uh, objective compliments. All right, I'm going on. I'm going quite fast. I realize that. But I'm giving you the explanation that I think you need. Uh, another sentence part, and now I'm going back to phrases. I had said I'm going to stop on phrases. An objective complement can be one single word. Uh, an infinitive phrase, it can't really be one single word because an infinitive is going to have the word to in it, it at least in, in English. Uh, to laugh, to sing, to smile, to uh, teach. Uh, an infinitive phrases, all right, and henceforth they would be inf, ph. Objective compliments, and I guess I didn't assign an abbreviation. All right, uh, they involve an infinitive uh, to read. Now, again and again, I've told you that to really understand syntax, you first have to understand your morphology, which is a little bit more work and maybe not as rewarding. Uh, and that's the part that I dealt with earlier in this course. An infinitive is a verb preceded by the word to, to, to do something. Uh, well, you can use, uh, uh, an in, I'll 
first show you an infinitive phrase that's being used as a modifier. It's used like an adjective might be used. Uh, the book to read is War and Peace. The book is War and Peace. Now this is a linking verb, so we've got a, a, a line going like that. Here we've got a predicate nominative, War and Peace, a, a phrasal noun. Uh, which book? What kind of book? Book to read. Now you do it like a prepositional phrase. That should be T-O, to read. But this is not a prepositional phrase. Uh, th because prepositional phrases end with something like a noun, the object of a preposition. This is a verb. It can have complements. Uh, 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 you, could, you could add to it slowly. The book to read slowly is, uh, is War and Peace. Well, that's an infinitive phrase. I think I've got another one. If you use it as a, as a noun, so, so this would be going on down here. An infinitive phrase as a noun uh, would be uh, to read war and peace is a big challenge. That, that is a very big, important, complicated, deep book. So that is a, ch a big challenge. Well, I'm sorry that this is a little hard to read, but now uh, it's the subject. It's, it's, it's acting as the subject. What is a challenge? Uh, here's the part that tells something is a challenge. What is a challenge? Well, we're telling about the subject to read war and peace. And there we've got a direct object. To read, I capitalize the T because that's where the sentence starts. To read war and peace. Obviously, this is not a prepositional phrase because it's got a direct object. To read war and peace is a big challenge. And there's a sloping line. All right, I have one more video today, uh, which is basically introducing you to the idea that you can have fun with this stuff. Uh, so, so come back one more time today, please.